Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because they rule well. And salutations to the hopeful elect scattered across the world fighting for their salvation. This is your brother Yanazar coming back at you with another lesson. It's going to be a quick hit. And um, the topic is spiritual powers. And um, I want to, you know, kind of get into this image that you see in front of you. Uh, first and foremost, all of the Israelites are children of the Most High, the men and the women. But um, the times were coming into Jacob's trouble. Only the men are going to possess spiritual powers. So that's first and foremost. Uh, what Esau has down at the bottom, you have a bunch of females with spiritual powers, which is inaccurate. Now, our women, they are the uh, daughters of Zion. They will have spiritual powers in the kingdom. But um, if the times we're coming into, they will not possess spiritual powers because that's not their lot on this side. The men will be using their spiritual powers to defend themselves as well as glorify the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And um, the women, they will be seeking after a man of the Lord with those spiritual capabilities. Because the way you got to see it is if a woman has spiritual powers, what, how can uh, Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1 be fulfilled if a woman has the power to defend herself? What does she need a man of the Lord for? So I'm going to go and grab that real quick. Go and open up with that. Where's this, one right here? this is Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. And it says, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat your, our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our approach. And in that day, uh, Israelite females will be seeking after men of the Lord to the point to where, because uh, the, the thing about the women of this generation is, you know, they don't really possess any, you know, uh, how can I say it, uh, feminine skills, if you know what I mean. Like, they're not good at cooking and cleaning and, you know, you know sewing clothes together and things like that. All they want to do is twerk and, you know, put themselves on social media and, uh, you know, things of that nature. They don't really, you know, do their women due diligence as uh, serving their men. So, um, but in that day, they're going to be so desperate that they're willing to, you know, pick up on those skills only to obtain the favor of a man of the Lord so that they can have that protection. And if a female has spiritual powers, she can defend herself. Like uh, Zena, the warrior princess, or uh, Wonder Woman, what? How can this scripture be fulfilled then? What need does she have for uh, a man if she can defend herself with those spiritual capabilities? So that's just one example I can give you. And um, here's another scripture I can go into. Uh, this is pertaining to uh, the Israelite man being a god. Uh, we don't have a goddess in the nation of Israel. That's just that's going off. Uh, when you go into the word gods, it goes into angels and uh, judges, you know, you know, positions of power that uh, the Lord created for the Israelite men. And um, let's see, this is Psalms 82, chapter 6. And on the left, you have the NIV version of the scripture. And on the right, you have the King James version. So I'm going to read the uh, NIV on the left. And it says, I said, you are gods, lowercase g. You are all sons of the Most High. The key word here is sons. Now, if you go back to this image, now obviously the ones on the bottom are not sons. They would represent the daughters of Israel. Okay, so when it goes into the sons, it's talking about the males, as you see on the top. Now, um, you know, of course, Esau likes to white whitewash everything, so you know they got that pale ass skin, but. And the king, and we're going to have that glorious dark brown skin. Because um, that's how the Heavenly Father looks. Uh, so that's the uh, angelic look of the heavens. So, but um, like I said, this was just a quick hit. Um, this image is going off. Eda, Esau is a beta male simp. So, you know, he likes to put the woman on a pedestal. So, you know, this plays into the feminism stuff. You know, men and women are equal. Which means that if a man has spiritual powers, then a woman can have spiritual powers, which is not the case. Uh, 
throughout history, the Lord has uh, proven that he's dealing with the Israelite man. You think of examples like uh, Moses, King David, Samson, so on and so forth. So um, that's not to discourage the Israelite women because they will be in their order in the kingdom. You know, but um, they will have certain you know, spiritual capabilities and things like that. But their job is to be back at home, you know, you know, uh, watching over the household, you know, raising the children, nurturing the children. The Israelite woman will be the natural, the most, the best uh, nurturer on the planet compared to all the other women. You know, she'll have slaves and servants of her own. But for the time being, uh, the times will come and issue. Only the Israelite man will possess uh, those spiritual capabilities, chiefly a man of the Lord. So, yeah, that's all I want to go into for today. Uh, Lord's way, you were edified. Shalom.